The Empire of Harsha was an ancient Indian empire founded and ruled by Emperor Harsha from the capital Kanayu. It existed from 606 to 647 and at its height covered all of the North India. Although the empire was short-lived, the peace and prosperity that prevailed made the court of Harsha a center of cosmopolitanism, attracting scholars, artists and religious visitors from far and wide, such as the Chinese traveler Shan Zhang. Background after the decline of the Gupta Empire in the mid-6th century CE, North India was split into several independent kingdoms. The northern and western regions of India passed into the hands of a dozen or more feudatory states. Prabhakavadana, the ruler of Thanissar, who belonged to the Pushyabhuti family, extended his control over neighboring states. Rajashri, the sister of Rajavardhana and Harsha, had married the Mirukari king, Grayavarman, whose capital was at Kanayu. Some time later, Grayavarman was killed by the ruler of the Malava kingdom, who also kidnapped Rajashri. Rajavardhana, who had succeeded his father as king at Thanissar, marched against the Malava king and defeated him. Around 6006 CE, Rajavardhana died, perhaps murdered at a meeting by Shashanka, ruler of the Gorda kingdom. It was after the death of Rajavardhana that Harsha succeeded to the throne. History the Empire of Harsha revived the past glory of the Gupta Empire in northern India. The economy of northern India prospered and his capital at Kanayu became a great center of trade. During his early career he possessed a force of 5,000 elephants, 20,000 cavalry and 50,000 infantry and with this he overran northern India. After the conquest of almost the entire of northern India, his military resources were so increased that he could field an army with 100,000 cavalry and 60,000 elephants. His long run of victories was only broken when he was defeated by the South Indian Emperor Pulexai II of the Chalukya dynasty. The administration of Harsha was similar to the Gupta Empire. He was just in his administration and punctilious in exercising his responsibilities. There was no forced labor and everyone was free to busy himself with his own affairs. Harsha was continually traveling up and down his wide dominions to see with his own eyes how the people were ruled in his empire. The merchants traveled freely in his empire and officials were paid regularly. The taxes were light and one-sixth of the land produce was charged as land revenue. Today a mound one kilometer long and 750 meters wide known as Harshkartila in Thanissar has ruins of structures built during the reign of Harsha. Amongst the archaeological finds from the mound include painted grey ware, shreds in the pre-Kushana levels and red polished ware from post-Gupta period. Economy Economy under the empire of Harsha became increasingly more locally self-sufficient and feudal in nature as trade and commerce receded. This is reflected in the decline of trade centers, paucity of coins and near-complete disappearance of trader and merchant guilds. Diminishing trade and commerce affected handicraft and other industries through want of demand, and affected agriculture although not directly. As a result of the lack of trade, the need to produce agricultural goods for sale externally vanished and people began producing amounts adequate enough to meet their own local needs. This marked the rise of self-sufficiency in the village economy and the growing dependence on agriculture. Feudalism When scholars mention Indian feudalism, the empire of Harsha is usually taken as a typical state. Insight into Harsha's empire is given by the discovery of a set of plates of copper, dating back to 632 CE, recording the gift of land by a military officer under Harsha's service to two Brahmins. Donations before Harsha's reign had come from either a royal prince or one of the provincial governors. In the copper plates, the first dignitary mentioned was a Mahasamanta, who ruled the territory adjoining Kanayu. But, the donor of the land was a military servant of Kanayu, and the execution of the grant came under Harsh's accounts. 
This leads to the conclusion that the Mahasamantas were in fact independent rulers with kingdoms near the core area of an overlord, here, King Harsha, and they paid tribute and provided military assistance to him, though they may have obtained their territories through inheritance or conquest. There were some who served kings and got grants in the form of land to support their official duties, a process similar to distribution of feudal grants in Europe. Contact with China Harsha maintained diplomatic relations with China, which was under the rule of Emperor Taizong of the Tang Dynasty. He also had good relations with the Tang rulers of China. Envoys from each country visited each other nation, most notably being Shanzang who spent eight years in the empire of Harsha, patron of Buddhism and literature. Harsha's father, Prabhakavadana, was from Thanissar. His brother followed Hinayana Buddhism while, according to Bana, Harsha himself was a Mahayana Buddhist. Harsha was a tolerant ruler and supported all Indic faiths, Buddhism, Vedism and Jainism. Early in his life, he seems to have been a follower of sun worship, becoming a patron of Shaivism and Buddhism later on. His sister Raja Shri's conversion to Buddhism presumably had a positive effect on his support to the religion. His approach to religion is evident in his celebrated player Nagananda. The play's theme is based on the Jatakar tale of the Bodhisattva Jimitavahana, but Harsha introduces the goddess Gauri, Shiva's consort, as the savior of Jimitavahana, a feature not found in the Jatakar. According to the Chinese pilgrim Shanzang, who visited his kingdom in 636, Harsha built numerous stupa in the name of Buddha. Shanzang entered a grand competition organized by Harsha and won the theological debate. Harsha also became a patron of art and literature. He made numerous endowments to the university at Nalanda. Two seals of Harsha have been found in Nalanda in the course of the excavations. All these favors and donations of the great emperor were crowned by the construction of a lofty wall enclosing all the buildings of the university, to defend the institution from any other possible attack. In 643 he held a Buddhist convocation at Kanayu which was reputedly attended by 20 kings and thousands of pilgrims. In 641, following Shanzang's visit, Harsha sent a mission to China which established the first diplomatic relations between China and India. The Chinese responded by sending an embassy consisting of Li Yibiao and Wang Zuans, who probably traveled through Tibet and whose journey is commemorated in inscriptions at Rajagriha, modern Rajgur, and Bodhgaya. Harsha was a noted author on his own merit. He wrote three Sanskrit plays, Nagananda, Ratnavali and Priyadasika. His reign is comparatively well documented, thanks to his court poet Bana in Harshakarita and by Shanzang in Si Yuki. Bana composed an account of Harsha's rise to power in Harsha Charitha, the first historical poetic work in Sanskrit language. Shanzang wrote a full description of his travels in India. Harsha's participation in the cultured life of his court was more direct than that of most kings, and it is in his personal contribution to Sanskrit literature that he clearly overshadows them. To him are assigned three plays, Priyadasika, Ratnavali, and the Nagananda. In addition, he is credited with two significant poems on Buddhist themes, the Ashtamaha Shri Kachar Stotra and Suprabhata Stotra, and a tract on grammatical gender, the Linganus is Anam. Harsh's authorship has been disputed on several occasions, but no decisive contrary arguments have been proposed. The Priyadasika appears to be the earliest of Harsh's plays. It and the Ratnavali deal with the amorous adventures of the king Vatsa, his queen Vasavadita, and newcomers to the royal harem. Both plays borrow from the earlier works of Basa and Kalidasar and are based ultimately on material in the collection Bratkatha. These plays lack thematic novelty but sustain interest through brisk dialogue. Both are frequently cited by later writers on dramatic theory and technique. Harsh's Nagananda is his most important play. It is, in fact, a singular creation in Sanskrit drama. 
This five-act drama draws again on the Britkatha for the substance of its first three acts. In him, the hero, Jimitavahana, prince of the Vidyadharas, meets and marries the Siddhar princess Malayavati. To that point, the romance of the fairy prince and princess is quite conventional. The mood of the play changes sharply in the fourth act. Jimitavahana discovers mounds of skeletons which evidence the daily sacrifice of serpents to the celestial bird Garuda. The hero resolves to offer his own body so that the serpents may be spared. At the drama's conclusion it is the non-Buddhist goddess Gauri, however, who restores the Bodhisattva, Jimitavahana, to life. In this attractive and moving drama, Harsha combined Buddhist and Hindu themes adroitly and uniquely, and through it one sees clearly his artistic and political genius. Disintegration Harsha died in 647, having ruled for 41 years. His empire died with him, disintegrating rapidly into small states. The succeeding period is very obscure and badly documented but it marks the culmination of a process that had begun with the invasion of the Huns in the last years of the Gupta Empire. In 648, Tang Taizong sent Wang Zhuans to India in response to Harsha sending an ambassador to China. However once in India he discovered Harsha had died and the new king attacked Wang and his 30 mounted subordinates. This led to Wang Zhuan's escaping to Tibet and then mounting a joint of over 7,000 Nepalese mounted infantry and 1,200 Tibetan infantry an attack on the Indian state on June 16. The success of this attack Wang Zhuan's the prestigious title of the Grand Master for the Closing Court. He also secured a reported Buddhist relic. For China, neither Banners nor Shanzang's account gives any details of this period. Harsha had two sons named Vajavardhana and Kalyan Vedana. They were killed by Arunashwa, a chief minister in Harsha's court. Harsha's wife Durgavati was taken prisoner.